This week I thought I'd address some of the misconceptions I've seen kicking around on social media and even in some group chats with my friends. Because that thing parked behind me, it isn't the Ford Bronco, even though it kind of looks like it from all the way up here. And it says it is right across the grill. But no, that is the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite small SUVs you can buy. Wait, that isn't a Ford Bronco? Oh my God. I totally get all the hype around the full-size Ford Bronco that should be here sometime this summer. I'm probably just as excited as anyone else this side of the people that actually put deposits down. And there's also nothing wrong with buying a vehicle that makes a statement, even if you don't back it up with actions. Just ask all the Jeep owners out there who don't take their Wranglers any further from the pavement than a gravel parking lot. But those really are lifestyle vehicles, whereas this is something that I would call a lifestyle support vehicle. No, it's not gonna make it quite as far as either of those, but it is gonna get you and your stuff to most places without a problem. And it's gonna do it in a nice and civilized package. This is the top trim I'm driving, and that means it has some stuff you can't get anywhere else in the lineup. And first and foremost is the two liter turbo engine that's under this hood. Now this thing does share a platform with the Ford Escape, so why not share motors too? The base is a one and a half liter three cylinder, but if you step up to this Badlands trim, you get an extra piston and 250 horsepower. And I do have to say that right away, I noticed just how smooth this powertrain is. And that did surprise me a little bit because in both the Ford Escape and the Lincoln Corsair that I drove more recently, this powertrain did have some problems and they all stem from the transmission. But it seems like Ford has finally addressed those bugs. There were just some shutters and awkward shifts, but they are gone. This is the exact same setup. I'm very impressed with the smoothness of the powertrain. Now, the other thing that's unique about this Badlands trim is the four wheel drive system. It's a twin clutch unit. And that means it's gonna respond just a little bit quicker to what's happening underneath you and send torque to the wheel with more traction. Some of the other unique stuff are suspension components, ride heights about an inch taller, and it also has some other goodies like skid plates underneath and two extra drive modes specifically for mud and rocks. You cycle through them with this little dial down here on the console and they change all the drive stuff, including the computers, to tailor them to the conditions you're driving in. Very cool stuff. There's also some buttons down here so you can do stuff like lock that four wheel drive system, sits into an automatic one, and it really does prefer to run in front wheel drive to cut down on fuel economy outside of scenarios when you're accelerating or you do need just a little bit more traction. You can also do stuff like lock the rear differential, engage trail control, which is essentially like cruise control for off-road, and shut off the traction control. That's all very handy stuff when you're out having fun. And you know, it might make a lot of sense to compare this thing to something like the Trailhawk version of the Jeep Compass or the Jeep Cherokee, but take it from a former owner. The vibe here is a lot more like the Subaru Outbacks. What it really comes down to is the way that they carry themselves. Just like the Outback, this Bronco Sport is rugged enough, but it still feels like it's gonna fit in around town. And let's be honest with each other, that's probably where you're gonna be driving this thing most of the time anyway. Now the ride quality is a little bit rigid and truck-like, just like it is in the Ford Escape, but I think it's a lot more fitting here because of that rugged demeanor. And it doesn't mean that it isn't smooth. It's only very large bumps and cracks in the road that you're going to notice any issues. I also really like the steering setup too. It is a little bit on the heavy side, but it's just as quick as anything else to change direction. And there isn't very much body roll considering how tall and upright this thing is. But that does bring me to the fuel economy. I have had a bit of a problem with it this week because I was expecting it to be a little bit better. Now, don't get me wrong, I have been doing better than the official rating of 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers combined, but I was hoping for a little bit more considering how much highway driving I've been doing and how often those rear wheels have been disconnected. Because I'm closer to 10 liters per 100 kilometers this week, and if you take a look at that Outback, well, with the upgraded turbo engine, it's rated to burn 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers. And the other thing is when I owned an Outback, Yes, it had the two and a half liter naturally aspirated engine under the hood, but I could easily average around eight and a half liters per hundred kilometers this time of year with winter tires. 
Now, I know the shape of this thing is a lot more Forester than Outback, but that's not the point. The point is that just like the Outback, at least this thing is different than your average SUV. Remember my friend with the bad car takes? It's, it's Brad, his, his name's Brad. Yeah, even he thinks this thing looks cool, and I think Ford nailed that retro-inspired front end. I also love this multi-level roof. It gives it a unique touch. It's not quite as pronounced as the Nissan Xterra's, but it is a little bit bigger than the Land Rover Discovery's, and it helps it stand out. And Ford says it also helps it accommodate a 29-inch bike tire. There's even an accessory you can buy to have two bikes in there, and all you have to do is remove their front wheels. Very cool stuff. Now, speaking of cool, one of my favorite features you can get in an SUV rear glass that opens independent of the rest of the tailgate so you can reach in there and grab your stuff without everything falling out i love it and there's lots of other cool stuff in here too so let's take a look at them first you get these floodlights up here on the tailgate which are going to come in handy when you're camping and you need to get stuff out of the back at night there's also some cargo hooks in here there's even a bottle opener i mean i love little touches like this very cool stuff but now for maybe my biggest hang up about this entire vehicle in its rear seat space. Just take a look in there. There's about four inches less rear legroom than you get in the Escape, and that is very significant. But beyond that, just take a look at these doors. They don't open very wide, and it makes it very awkward to climb inside. Now, if you are planning to use this for family life, there are a few things you should know, and some of it's more important than others. The first one I'm gonna point out isn't such a big deal, but it is worth mentioning. Those rear seats, they are not heated in this top trim. But the bigger deal is there are no USB ports in the back, which I find very strange. And since we're on the topic of stuff I don't like, I really do wish that Ford would give you quick release handles in the back so you could fold down those rear seats from the cargo area. And the other thing is there's no cargo privacy cover, which is very strange. And I also don't think it's too much to ask for a power tailgate at this price point, which is something that you don't get in this Bronco Sport, but it's not all bad news in here. You do get two household outlets in the back as well as four USB ports in the front, this eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot, and both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And all of it is very easy to use. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this interface is as good as others out there like Hyundai's or FCA's, but it's fairly straightforward and there's not much of a learning curve. If there was one thing I'd like to see in here, it would be wireless connections for both of those smartphone mirroring systems, but you do get both USB-A and USB-C ports, which is kind of cool. And something else I absolutely love about the Bronco Sport is the look of this interior, especially with this upgraded brown leather and suede. It just looks fantastic. But another point, these heated seats are on another level. I'm pretty sure the person responsible for the temperature of these things is the same one who invented the McDonald's apple pie and decided that the internal temperature of those things does need to be the same as molten lava. Honestly, I cannot keep this seat on for more than five minutes on the lowest setting without feeling like I'm going to be stuck to it permanently. I've never experienced a seat this hot. Again, I don't know if it's the leather or what, but it is very strange. Anyways, let's talk pricing. If you want this Badlands trim, you're gonna pay about 42 grand before tax. So about a thousand bucks more than the Subaru Outback Outdoor XT. But if you want this one, I'm driving with these upgrades like this leather, the sunroof, the wireless charger, and the heated steering wheel, you're gonna pay three grand more for a standalone package. And the same goes with adaptive cruise control. That's an $850 option. But a bunch of advanced safety features do come standard, like blind spot monitoring, automatic forward emergency braking, and lane keep assist. And I do like that you can shut that off pretty easily with this button here on the end of the signal stock. With all those options plus a few extras, this one I'm driving is about $47,000 before tax, which is a lot of money for a small SUV. But if you take a look at a Jeep Compass Trailhawk with all the options boxes checked, it's about the same price. And the same goes with the Toyota RAV4 Trail TRD off road trip and then the jeep cherokee well that thing can easily cost more than 50 grand with the trail hawk package and a bunch of extras to recap i like the rugged ish demeanor of the bronco sport as well as how great it is as a daily driver and the way it looks inside and out I don't like how cramped the back seats are, that it's missing some cargo management features like a power tailgate or that adaptive cruise control costs extra. 
Obviously, I have a few issues with this Bronco Sport, but I think I could live with them because I don't have kids. And really, that's where I see this being a problem for some of you. So if you need a little bit of extra room, you might want to check out that Outback or even the Escape. But I think Ford has knocked this one out of the ballpark, and it's ready for just about any adventure you have planned for it this side of a weekend in Moab.